let me preface um, by saying that uh, the data collection things are very different on the PC side of Excel than they are on the Mac side. So when you're in the training, you're going to be in the PC environment and uh, you know, you'll see some of the tools that are there uh, in action. And then um, what I've done with today's lecture is try to translate those um, for the uh, Mac environment in Excel, automating worksheet tasks. And uh, we're going to take a look at uh, the A project. You'll see there is the instruction file as usual. And remember, at the end of the instruction file, I found this useful. I made a little mistake when I was doing it, and I caught it by looking at the solution file uh, pictures that they give you at the end of the instruction file. And um, you know, I figured out what was going on with it. It was a minor mistake, but you know, obviously any mistakes will be downgraded. So you want to make sure that you've got everything. So looking at that solution file is always very helpful to kind of see, oh, look, you know, mine looks exactly the same, or um, you know, I can see you know what's going on that's different. So here's the start file, and uh, we can download that certainly. And then there are three support files. So these three files are HTML files. So they're internet files. I just want to also caution you, read the instructions carefully. Um, you can open these in Excel. If you just open them with Excel, they will open. But um, the idea here is that they want to show you how to pull data from the web. So what you want to do is, I'm just going to download the three of them. You want to open them in your browser. So I opened them in Chrome, and uh, you know, then you're basically copying and pasting as if you were you know, on a company website or something like that, and you need to download some data. Good. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So now that we got that downloaded, let's uh, change a little bit here. I made a little uh, slide deck for today's presentation. So let's go here and see what happens. Okay. Looks like it's working. All right. So the first thing was, you have a question, just open your mic and I say hello. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I downloaded all of them, but then they disappeared. So I went back into Cengage to open them, and now it's like not letting me. It's like asking me to submit. So I'm not sure. Okay, try try hitting the back button. There's a back button. Once you start downloading them, you know it, it says upload, right? It wants you to upload them because it thinks that you're you know working on the project. But if you click the back button, when you go back in there, do you see that? Yeah, I'm still in. Click that back button, and that should take you back to the original splash screen that has the, the download options. Oh, okay. Thank you. Good? Yeah. All right. We're not going to do it just, just yet. If you want, just open up Excel. To, if you want, you can open up that, that source file, because I'm going to kind of switch back and forth between this slide deck and Excel. Um, but I figured this would be a nice way to do a little engagement and ask you guys some questions. Um, let's see here. Let me just find my roster sheet. And uh, some of them are, are easy questions. You know, I think um, a lot of times we've covered a little bit of this stuff or a lot of it. So if you have a question, just ask it because I'm, I'm not looking at the chat. All right, so I'm going to start. We'll start from the back today, I guess. And uh, so our, our last customer is Alejandra. So Alejandra, why might you use a template in Excel? Um, I would use a template because it already has like the formatting that I want for whatever I'm creating. So it'll save me some time. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Right. So um, the idea that it's a preset kind of, uh, you know, document that hopefully is done correctly. You got to check that sometimes make sure that if there are embedded formulas in there, that they're, you know, you want to kind of examine the template to make sure that it makes sense to you how the formulas work. And, uh, you know, typically it'll give you uh, uniform and uh, correct results and also a professional look without having to, you know, design and stylize and set everything up yourself. So you can get a template for, uh, say, uh, you know, budget template or, um, uh, a balance sheet or something like that, and you don't have to start and reinvent the wheel for the template. You can pick something that is already up and running and just plug your data in and roll. Very good. So how would you do a template in Excel? 
on the Mac version, which we're looking at here. Okay, so we look at the splash screen here again. So you can see there are templates here that are kind of built in, but typically the best way to get templates is to go file new from template. Okay, and uh, on the PC, I think if you just go to new, you'll see a choice that also says from template. So if you click on this, um, well, it didn't do much different actually. So these are the templates and we can certainly search for templates here. So if I wanted say a budget template, you know, you get the idea, right? So here's all the templates here and you can see all these budgets laid out already. Some of them have charts built in and data bars and all kinds of goodies. And of course you could modify them too. You, you know, you don't want to just blindly kind of use someone else's template. You may want to customize it, add your own branded kind of look to it, color schemes, logos, things like that. And then you can save it on your own machine as your template. So this time, every time you want to open a budget, say for your um, startup or your company, it'll have your you know branded kind of feel to it. Good, does that make sense to everybody? All right, let's go back to uh, Google here and Let's see if we're, you know, if Alejandra was right. Um, I don't know if there, it looks like she was right, right? So templates allow for professional looking workbooks, good for repeated workbooks, things that you do all the time. You know, I have to do a, you know, a spreadsheet every week and I want it to be consistent and look the same. I run with a template and it always, you know, kind of works for me. And also my viewers know what to expect. So when they see, you know, the same kind of layout and format in my template. They know where to look for the important information that pertains to them, things like that. All right, uh, Ching, you get the next one here. How do you create a new worksheet in a workbook? This is a really straightforward one, and I know I showed you one way. I don't think I pointed out the more obvious way. Uh, any idea, Ching? Um, is it where you... Let me see, let me go to my- Here we are, let's go, let's go to Excel. Yeah. If you watch my, my screen, you can see it too. I'll just open, I'll open yeah. up a document here. Okay, so here we are. And we've got uh, right now three sheets on this workbook. How would I create a new one? So you just click on the plus sign, basically. Absolutely, right? So the plus sign will give me a new sheet one if I do that and I can move it around. Um, I think when we did the lecture, I told you guys, um, you know, my favorite is control clicking. And then, you know, here you can see insert sheet. Well, that'll actually put it, you know, where it'll put it before the sheet that's selected. Okay, so obviously every time you need to create a new uh, worksheet, um, it's pretty easy to do. You don't have to create a new workbook and it's always nice to keep things kind of like in the same binder by using the same uh, workbook for them. And of course you can delete them. So we'll delete those extra ones there. Okay. All right, so that was that certainly wasn't brain surgery, right? So put a little screenshot in here. It's not the greatest. I didn't have time to kind of do this, but here it is, you know, the little plus sign. So certainly you can do that or you can right click. All right. All right, so and here's a good one. Uh, let's see, uh, Corral is our next victim customer, I mean. So Corral, what do you think? Why download external data into Excel? Um, I guess like if you have to, include another file or if there's like a document with like important information that you need to like present and you have to get it from a different file I, okay i guess that's considered external data absolutely any 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 data that you're going to get from outside is going to be considered external um so you know you might be doing some research you might be doing some analytics you can download stuff from various, uh, you know, Google, and uh, if you're obviously tracking things like sales for advertising, marketing, communications, uh, you know, the idea of metrics um, in uh, performance and social media performance is critical. So Excel is a great tool to grab that data and then uh, analyze it, report it, uh, visualize it in a chart all kinds of things like that. So let's see if Corral is right here. Yeah, so ensures accuracy and saves time. So this is the Mac screen and uh, not, as, uh, not as many choices as the PC screen, but um, certainly you can import from um, HTML documents. You can import from text and I'm gonna show you that. Um, you can download files that are uh, text files and then you can also make uh, queries into databases. 
it's a little more complex. But uh, you know, if you have a database, typically you need to have a association. Um, maybe you pay for certain data, and uh, you have a uh, username and password. You can get into the database and then download data from there. Good, nice job, Crow. Um, okay, here's the next one. Why make a custom list for data entry? So, do you guys remember what that was, a custom list? I think we made one earlier on. How about uh, Joanna? Good morning, Joanna. Custom list. So, for instance, if I look at this, I can see there's a list of some pharmaceuticals here, right? What, what, can you no. hear me now? I can hear you, yes. Oh, okay, so it works. Um, yeah. I think, <laughs> is it to sort and fill out? Kind of? It's more to fill out than to sort. Oh, right? The idea out, would yeah. be that, you know, let's say my drugstore sells certain things. So if someone, you know, is looking to buy something, um, maybe they can't buy, you know, milk, right? So if they try to put that in, it won't work because it'll just say, you know, this is not available. You know, remember mm -hmm. you could set up and say not a valid entry or you could leave them a little message that says not available, something like that. So here it's all pharmaceutical items. So obviously if you put something down like aspirin, it'll work. So you could create this list and uh, store it on the PC. Um, I want to show you how to do it on the Mac. It's a little different on the Mac. Um, the custom list, uh, you're going to see it obviously in the training. Um, for the PC, but uh, not for the Mac. So on the Mac side, it's under the Excel uh, system menu, Preferences Custom List. Let's just take a quick look. Go back to Excel here. So remember, the system menu is this guy. And it's very confusing. I know students usually get confused about this. Like, for instance, I'll say, well, go to the Data tab. Well, there's two Data tabs. So you always make sure you want to specify. Here's the Data tab for the ribbon where we saw like get external data, right, and things like that. And then there's a, also a data tab up here in the system menu that has other things going on. Sometimes they're pretty similar too, depending on, you know, what you want to do or whatever. So this one is under preferences. And remember, that's going to be um, under your Excel menu, right? So you just go to Excel preferences. And as a Mac user, you should familiarize yourself with this because a lot of times, when you see something that is PC and you're like, uh-oh, I don't have it. A lot of times it's buried in here. So you go in there, oh, look at this, custom lists, here it is. Okay, so this will allow you to create a custom list. There are some built-in ones there. But basically here you can put in, you know, the list that you want to make and then add the list and then you'll be able to put it into your Excel spreadsheet. Make sense? Um, you can also add the validation things and things like that so that when people try to do something else uh, in the table, they'll get a, an error message. They can only, for instance, select pharmaceuticals from the drugstore list or groceries from a grocery list. Good? Nice work, Joanna. Everybody happy? All right, let's go back to um, Google here. Joanna nailed that one. Let's go to the next one here. Create a custom cell style. So this I noticed was a little bit different too, um, but you know, pretty pretty close actually on the PC side. So um, you know, why do it, Alexis? Any idea why you would want to do it? Certainly stuff that we've already been talking about, right? So if you look at some of the styles here, what do we got going on? You know, you might want to make uh, um. headings stand out, right? Go ahead, Alexis. Yeah, like one reason would be to like distinguish the information, make it more readable, things like that. For sure, point point the eye in the important directions, organize the data, uh, make it more readable, banded columns, banded rows, right? Everyone a different color, uh, maybe highlighting the total row so that we can see the total amounts right away, that what we owe, the dates that we owe it by, things like that kind of really stand out. And uh, so here we can do it in, on the Mac under Home, Styles, Cell Styles, New Cell Style. So it's quite a long breadcrumb trail, but let's take a quick look at it. So if you go here, so Home Styles, Cell Styles, New Cell Style. So uh, Home, 
Here's our styles and here's cell styles. Okay, so when you see that, and then here it is, new cell style. So you can use any of these built-in ones. You may be happy with those and just say, oh, this looks fine for my use. Or if you wanna create something totally um, you know, for your own design, you can name it and uh, add different things here as far as uh, formatting. Actually, not, not, I mean, it is obviously formatting, right? Like number and things like that. But as far as um, the format, you can click on this then, and this may look more familiar, right? We've seen this before, so where you can, you know, add various things right here. Good, makes sense. Certainly, useful tool again in organizing and uh, making sure your data is uh, clear, not only to you but people who are networking with you. Uh, maybe they're working with you to, um, you know, load data. Uh, you set up the spreadsheet for your employees, and they load data, or for your customers maybe are interacting with the sheet. Um, it could be even like using it as an invoice or something like that. So um, the idea is you want them to know how much they owe you, when they owe you, uh, what they owe you for, uh, all those kind of things. Good, nice work, Alexis, as usual. All right, so Lenise, you are our next victim. Let's see what we got for you here. Ooh, sell comments. So, Logically, so Lenise, why would you want to add a comment to a cell? Um, I guess it's just to have like maybe some tips or pointer, pointers, you know, towards the person who's reading it or, you know, just that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Could be, it could be a question too. Like, let's say again, you're networking with someone and you might say, well, you know, this data looks a little you know, off or whatever, or, you know, how'd you get it or whatever, you know, something like that might be there, like, uh, um, or, you know, you're just networking and you want to kind of touch base. So you're sharing the file and uh, you're kind of uh, collaborating. So you can use uh, comments to figure out what's going on there. Here I made a comment. I said, uh, you know, Florida sales here is way too low. Look at our other sales that way up. So here, you know, we got to work on our flat Florida, you know, accounts and make sure we bring them up or whatever. Okay. Um, so uh, that's one thing, you know, you can maybe put a comment in there that might make it clearer for someone else to uh, say in data entry, if they're entering data, there might be a comma of why you're asking for that data or ensuring them that that data will uh, be only used by you and remain private or, you know, whatever. Okay, so comments are really important for networking and um, networking with a team. Maybe just making notes to yourself, right? As you're, as you're doing the spreadsheet, you may say to yourself, uh, missing data, right? So I, I need to research this, but I'm not going to do it right now. But I want to leave a note to myself, note to self, fill in this data next week or something like that. Okay, and then you have uh, on the Mac and pretty similar on the PC, you know, the review tab is where the comments are. And you can do things like show comments, edit comments, and delete comments there. So let's take a quick look at that. I'm not going to go crazy with it because we're going to do it in the spreadsheet today. So it's under review. And then here you go, comments group. And you've got new comment. You can move around from previous to next comment. When you've already added that data and you want to delete the note to self, you can get rid of it. And then show comments will bring all the comments over here. Good. So there we go, I can put a new comment in here and the little airplane lets you post the comment. And then you'll see this little kind of blue, it's actually purple, I think, uh, little kind of uh, you know corner over here to let you know that there's something going on. And then someone else can reply to it. You can have like a string of, uh, you know, thread of comments going on there. And once you've, you know, resolved them, you can just say, you know what, let's get rid of that comment. Good, so a nice little tool. When you do do things like share, um, the document comments are definitely uh, very useful. Okay, you guys are hitting the, hitting them out of the park here. Um, I guess you were really studying a lot over spring break, huh? Couldn't put down the Excel document. Okay, so certainly um, again, this is a similar one. The idea of sharing it on a OneDrive, and um, if you don't have a OneDrive account, you should definitely set one up. It's free from Microsoft. And it will allow you to um, uh, upload your data to the cloud. So you have auto save over here. So if I click auto save on, it'll put it onto my OneDrive. 
and uh, it's just really convenient. I think I might have spoke to you guys about it before, um, but uh, you know, free storage. Um, things are organized. It auto saves every time you open the document, so you don't even have to think about saving. Um, it just you know always saves the most updated version. So it's definitely uh, fun to have. But you need a OneDrive account, and you can set that up at Microsoft.com. Good. Uh, so Victoria, I got to get you a question here. Let's go to the next one here. Share. Okay, I think that's pretty much the same same stuff, right? Quick access toolbar. So that can be customized, and uh, I don't think there's really so much of a question there. You should just know where it is. Um, this is the quick access toolbar. Okay, right on the top, where auto save is, and I've got things like you know quick kind of secretarial things like save and print. So, but if you click over here, you can um, add other things, you know, that you might want to use all the time or even dig even deeper. And there are a whole bunch of things here. Obviously, you don't want to add too many things up there because then you might as well just go in and, you know, the idea is to have this in, you know, the most used commands. So it's just easy. You don't have to dig all the time. But if you put too much up here, then I think it might get a little bit confusing. So typically, you know, like I think we said earlier on, everybody uses Excel differently. So once you see that you do a, you know, obviously everybody saves in print, so that's why those are there by default. But let's say you use a certain, like maybe you do a lot of loans. So you use the payment command. You can actually put that up there and, uh, you know, grab it right away from there. Okay. So don't worry, Victoria, we got something coming up here. Protect sheets. Okay, so how about this one then, Victoria? I um, think we, we saw this in another chapter. Right? But why would you want to uh, protect and encrypt stuff? So nobody can change um, the data. Okay, right. We don't want people, at least unauthorized people, mm -hmm. right, going in there and making you know changes to the sheet or the or the whole book. So you want to be able to make sure that you can lock it or um, or lock certain cells. So you know you can have a certain area that's open for data entry, but other areas that are locked. So for instance, here's a classic example. On a payroll sheet, you can allow employees to put hours worked, but they won't be able to change their hourly rate, give themselves a raise, right? But they can put in the number of hours that they worked, like a timesheet. Uh, so you would have, you know, one set of maybe one row or one column locked and the other one open for data. Okay. Um, and then there is, a, again, in the training, they show you how to encrypt it with a password. And I'm just going to show you on the Mac. Again, it's just slightly different. You got to go to file passwords. Um, the, the PC version has something called backstage view when you go to file. And um, the Mac doesn't, but it does have a file command. And if you go down here, you can see passwords. So when you go here, you can actually um, put in a password um, in order. There's two, two ones that you can have, uh, one to open the file uh, and then one to modify. So you can have people who can just open a locked file that is read only and they can just see it or they can actually modify the file depending on what you do here. And obviously you can have two different passwords for that. Um, I think we talked about this too. You want to make sure you don't forget this password because there's no way to easily retrieve it. Okay, and then also over here in the review tab, you can do you know protect sheet and protect worksheet again similarly, where you can uh, give certain permissions and parameters and then lock other ones out. Obviously, a very useful tool for something like Excel, where you know anywhere data needs to be protected social security numbers, account numbers, things like that. You don't want, you know, kind of floating around for anybody to kind of have access to. And that's what uh, hacking is all about, right? How do, you, <laughs> how do you get, you know, beyond that and uh, really get in there? Uh, okay. And then uh, the last thing here, I didn't want to confuse you guys too about something else as a concept. There's something called a data map that you're going to see in the training. A data map is not a geographical map, but there's also a map chart, which is a geographical map. So a data map is really just a way of saying how data is structured and configured, you know, depending on like, uh, 
the way it's set up on a web page. There may be a certain kind of configuration. Um, it could use certain formats uh, like CSV or uh, XML or different types of uh, formats um, that allow you to kind of make lists and tables and things like that, so the way the data is identified. But Excel also has this neat little uh, kind of graphic thing that you can do with a geographical kind of uh, chart. And uh, I don't know if it's in the actual assignments that I signed, but I thought it was kind of useful. So I wanted you to see how that worked too. I think that might be the last slide. All right, so you can see these are the files that I just downloaded and you should have downloaded. Uh, we have Excel 10A, um, and that's the raw Excel file. And then there are three support HTML files, one called Accounts, Prospects 1, and Prospects 2. So let's open it up and sail right in. All right, so here we go, Hexagon Engineering. We're good friends at Hexagon. This is easy, very, very easy. I found it very simple, uh, very, you know, little glitches. Hopefully you will too. Okay, so the first thing is, I um, just want to make sure I need to read the instructions here so I know what I'm talking about. I did this a while back. So go to the accounts worksheet. Um, we want to show all comments. Okay, so you can see that there are a couple of comments here. Everywhere you see these little markers, there's a comment. Here, Jing says, uh, you can list soil without treatment for cleanup service. So show all comments. Remember, you want to go to review and then uh, show all comments. Okay, that'll give you a pane, a comments pane over here where you can see uh, other comments that are listed. Okay, so let's go to the next one now. It says uh, delete in cell C7, change the data that Jing recommends using only soil in the entry. Okay, so you want to go here and certainly not much going on, right? So you just delete that and uh, there's her comment. And now you can delete her comment. Why I can't delete, there it is. Okay, you click right on the cell and now I can delete her comment. Okay, so that's gone. Uh, delete the note in the cell, so review, comment, delete. That's what you want to do, right? So review tab, comment group, delete. And then she asks you to respond to the two comments from Ray Han. So here's Ray. He says, we received payment for the invoice at the beginning of the week. And uh, cell F7 is that one. F7, it's paid, right? There it is. Um, so what we want to do over here um is reply to the comment say okay thanks and of course type it exactly the way they say it it's capital o-k-a-y and then uh actually remember excel is a stickler and so is cengage comma and then uh thanks okay and now to post it hit the little paper airplane and now here it goes so it's posted and you can edit it later if you wanted to or you could also delete it Question? Yeah. Yes. Um, it says that for me when I click on the comment to show all comment, it says that it's a threaded comment and that my version of Excel allows me to read the threaded comment, but I can't see it the way you do. Okay. Like are, you using, the, are you using the, the, um, the version of Excel that's downloaded from the FIT website or are you using the web version? Um, yeah, but my computer is a little older, so I had to download. I can tell you. Okay, it might be it might be because you're using a slightly older version of Excel. Right. Um, hang on a second. Let's just see what's going on here. So I close that pass task pane. Um, when you go to review comments group, you don't see a show comments icon. I, I do, and I I clicked it. And when you click on that, you see the thread thing. Right. It's it, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It doesn't come up on the side like that for me. I have version 16. I don't know if it's okay. That's that's not so bad. This is 16.44. So yeah, no, minus 16.16. 16. Okay, so it's a little out of date, but I'm sure it's okay. Um, try doing it like this. If you click right on the, um, let me just see something here. If I close this comment thing, let's just see if we can do it this way. See, did you do you see it like that? If you click on the cell, it has the um, no. Does it, it doesn't pop up there either. No, it just it looks like some sort of glitch. Like it's like a little mm -hmm. yellow box, and okay. it says threaded comment. It's like 
I guess it's almost like the code is correct, but it just can't show it. I'll just email you about it later because I can't. Okay, that's that sounds good. I was going to suggest something like that. So I mean, and don't worry about it. If you can't, you know, we'll we'll compromise it. Um, but let's see what we can do here. You know, just you know, see what what uh, the, the demonstration at least, so you understand how it works. Hopefully, we can get it to work for you. Okay, so uh, we did that comment, right? Uh, and uh, the next one then is. Um, Reply to comment, uh, reply to the comment in E9, including the text, this amount is correct. Okay, so he's not sure about something. Again, we were kind of saying that, uh, you know, so this amount is correct. And again, type it the way they have it. Even things like, um, you know, for instance, the period. So I'm thinking, Forgetting the period might not make the uh, the artificial intelligence engine happy when it grades it because it's not exactly the same string that they're looking for. Good. And I told you this was going to be fairly easy. It's almost like an insult to your intelligence. But uh, Jing notices that the entry in the service column might be incorrect and wants to ask Ray to verify it. In cell B5, let's just go there. Insert and post a new comment that contains the following text. This was a design project. Please check with Katie. All right, so the idea here is the learning thing is just to know how to do a new comment. Okay, so we're going to click on that. And you know what? I'm not going to type the whole thing just to save time, but you guys should. <laughs> uh, but that's what you want to type in there, right? So you're just posting a comment and make sure after you type it, you click on the paper airplane to post it. I just don't want to slow us down. Uh, okay, so select, review, comment, new comment. We're good with that. Number four, Jing wants to import some account data from an external company web page. Import the data from the external company web page as follows. So it says open the file uh, accounts HTML in your browser. Okay, so let's just see what happens if I, I mean, I can do it two ways. I can actually open my browser. So let's go to, you know, Chrome here, and I'm going to go to File, Open File. Okay, I'm just wondering if I just clicked on the file, it should launch your preference browser, the one that you have as your default. Okay, so there it is, Accounts. Click on it, and it's going to open up in Chrome. Okay, make sure you're actually in Chrome. You're not in Excel. See that? I'm in Chrome over here. Um, Chrome is the active... Uh, so now the idea is that you can simply copy and paste uh, from this. So it says drag and copy the four rows of data. So remember, four rows of data doesn't mean the headings. It means Wait, just Professor, the four rows of Wait, Professor, sorry. Yes. I wasn't able to open this. And I don't have Chrome. I have another browser. But how did you open it? Which browser are you using, Joanna? Uh, a browser called Brave. Oh, OK. Um, so um, I'm not exactly familiar with that. But the idea is I, I went to, typically it should work the same in any browser. Go to file. Mm -hmm. Do you see open file or open? Yeah. Open okay, file. so go there and then use that dialog box then to navigate to your downloads where those mm -hmm. files are and open up the support oh, yeah. accounts one. Support. So the whole idea is that the you know the idea is that this is something that would be on the internet. Um, we have a local file here, but you know we might be searching for it you know live on the web. And here it is. And now we need to bring this data into Excel. Good. So highlight the four uh, rows of data. And then um, it says to copy them. So you can use any technique you want. I'm just going to use edit copy here. And now I'm going to navigate back to Excel. And I'm using the taskbar. But I just want to point something out. Uh, you, you guys probably know this already. But if you hold down Command and Tab, you can see all active present, I mean, all your active applications. And just by clicking the tab key, you can move from one to the other. So this is great when you're kind of moving back and forth from one application to the other. OK, so here we are. And now it says to, um, in the prospects worksheet, uh, paste it into A1. OK, so that seems pretty straightforward. I'm just going to make this a little larger so you guys can see it a little better. So to paste it into A1, there's two ways to do it. 
once I go into A1, I can just, you know, control V or go to edit paste. But let me show you this. I think this works better. I'm going to go home and I'm going to go to paste and see here you get the options to say keep source formatting or match destination formatting and they want you to match the destination. So there's formatting built into the spreadsheet already and it'll match that. Oh, that does not look right. That does not look Did right. Did you copy the titles too? Did you copy the whole no, thing? No, no. Only the four that. rows of data, I think. Okay. That's what they say, the four rows of data. That was weird though. Kind of pasted it weird. Worked much better for me last time. Let me try it again one more time here. So I'm going to copy the data, go back into Excel. Let me try it this way this time. I'm just going to do edit paste. See what happens. That worked much better. <laughs> so actually, if you don't do it that way, I thought that was going to work better. But you, you also get this paste options thing here. So you can do it after the fact too. You can see keep for, source formatting or match destination. And actually, the destination formatting, you can see it change a little bit. It's almost the same though. But a lot of times you like, for instance, if you had, you know, some kind of colors going on or whatever, you can obviously match the data so it looks the same. It just changed the font and the font size a little bit. So, it, you know, it obviously looks like the same data. You don't want to make it stand out like, oh, look, you pulled this out of somewhere else. Okay. And then the other thing that I think they tell you to do is just, you know, kind of normalize things like, for instance, auto fitting, right? So you see some of these don't fit. So I'm just double clicking here to auto fit everything. Hey, Professor, how did you get it to present normally? I tried both the edit paste and the um, thing you did before that, and it's coming up the exact same way. Okay, so after you paste it, um, you should, let me paste it again. Let's see what happens here. So this time I'll do a uh, command V, and it pastes right at the very bottom. Wait, right. Go ahead. Isn't Can't that supposed to be pasted in the accounts worksheet? Um, you might be right. I don't know. Let me just double check here. No, it says uh, we did the accounts one, didn't we? No, maybe you're right. Prospects. In no, it says in the prospects worksheet, not in none accounts. The first one is prospects. First one goes into prospects in A1. No, it's accounts. She's right. It, for for step four. Oh wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm confusing you guys. So the first one is accounts. All right. Let me go back. I'm just going to take everything away here. Never mind. All right. So here we are. Right. We're in the we're in the right place. Uh, open the file in the browser, and then we copied it. Yeah, you're right. In the accounts worksheet in A10. Okay. So here we are in A10, and now let's try it again Nathaniel hopefully this would also uh, work for you so um, let's just do it a normal way that we would normally paste it I'm going to do command V to paste it and you'll notice right away that the formatting is different right you see like the this is center aligned this is right aligned it looks like the font is slightly smaller right different things are going on here so now I'll use this paste options button and go to match destination and there it goes see it matches to the destination format. I don't know. I thought I changed this to just soil, right? Okay, so that work for you it. now? Yeah, it's because okay. um on the um browser, instead of doing it like I did it with the keyboard of um copying it, but it, okay. like you were supposed to use the um tabs like on the top. Hmm. Yeah, sometimes you have to just kind of take it back and it might be, you know, little quirks in your version or your system or just the way that, you know, you do it. So, um, you know, I call that massaging it. You know, you kind of do it, do it once, do it twice. And all of a sudden, you know, works the third time. The third time is a charm. OK, thank you for pointing that out to me. You were, guy, you were absolutely right. Oh, is that Alexis? Uh, you, they, I, I missed that. So, yeah. So now everything looks uniform, right? We pasted it correctly. Uh, and now we're opening up the next one, which is uh, Prospects 1. Okay, so again, I'm going to go back to Chrome and File Open, Open File, and Prospects 1. So there we are again, new data, has its own kind of uh, formatting. This time it says select the five rows. So I'm thinking they want the heading here. 
Okay, so select all and then copy, edit, copy, any way you want to do that. And now in the prospects worksheet. Okay, so let's go back to Excel, prospects. This one goes into A1. Okay, and then uh, let's let's do the, let's see if this one works this time. I'm going to go to uh, the home tab and do a paste. And what do they say here? Match the destination. So let's see what happens. We do that. Okay, so it took away all that color because the destination doesn't have it, right? Okay, so again, just... Professor? Four, yes. So it copy-pasted all of my data. It's like in one column, only in A. How? Yeah. Mm, okay. I wonder what um, I did. Like it's from yeah. in column A from 1 till 20. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> yeah. um, did, did, did you click on match destination formatting? I did, but let me, I'm just going to try it over again. But I think I did. Exactly try it again. Mm -hmm. That happened to me too. And I, you know, I just tried it over again and it, it worked. Um, it might have something to do with something we're going to look at a little bit later, um, the way that the files are structured. And uh, sometimes it does a little bit of weird things depending on, you know, but uh, it, sh it should work. Or you should be able to, you know, kind of make it work. See what happens, and then after we're done with the demo, we can take a better look at it, Joanna. Professor, does it matter that with me, it's like it works and everything, but it's not stretched out like yours? Like yours all fits. For me, it's like no. Well, I, I, I think I made it fit. Yeah, just you just oh, have you to kind of you know, remember you're in control of that. I, I made it fit, and I think they might they might even mention that they may say something like you know adjust it to to you know auto fit it or something like that in one or two of them. They remind you that. Okay, so everybody happy with number five? Can we move on to number six? And there's only seven, so. So Jing has three more prospective climates in another HTML file that would, would uh, that he would like to add to the prospects worksheet. Add the data from the internal company webpage as follows. Open prospects two. Okay, so again, oh, not, not in Excel, but it's kind of funny because watch what happens here. If I go to open and um, See that that file is here, prospects two. Watch, it will open in Excel. See, it will open and it'll look like, you know, kind of an Excel data thing, but that's not what they want you to do, so be careful. Um, you want to open it up in the browser as it was more like a, a live web page. Okay, so let's go back here, open file, and find prospects two again, open it up. You can see, obviously, it's the same, uh, but. It might be different when you bring it in as far as the grading. Okay, so drag to select the three rows. Got that. Um, so we're gonna copy the data in the prospect worksheet, paste the copy data to match the source formatting. Match the source formatting. So this time, not the destination. So we want it to look like this, the pink banded rows, right? Um, so starting in cell A6. So let's go back to Excel. A6 and match the source formatting. Okay, so paste. Let's paste it. Okay, and then match the source formatting. Keep source formatting. Okay, I expected it to actually turn red because the source was red. It's a little weird, but anyway, I pasted it in the wrong place too. Wait, do you keep why. the source formatting? or? That's what it one? says. It says, in prospects worksheet, paste the copy data to match the source formatting. So the source is the, the HTML file. So it should actually keep that formatting. I don't know why it's not. I think it worked for me the last time I did it. It seemed like it was fine. I expected it to work if this time, too. So you can see. With the, it has You're breaking up a little bit. Let me just try it one more time here. So copy, navigate to Excel, A6, to paste, and then match source. Keep source formatting. It didn't turn red this time. I'm not sure why, but I mean, obviously, 
it wouldn't really matter if you were doing this in real life, I'm just trying to, you know, make Cengage happy because I don't want them to grade you wrong. But obviously, you know, you could, you could obviously reformat this any way you want. I think this formatting is pretty weak, right? Because nothing really stands out. And especially when you have lots of data, you know, this can get very kind of hypnotizing and bleary eyed unless you use some formatting. So a lot of times when you have, you know, a lot of data and it's, you know, from a government website and it's just really dry looking by formatting it with banded columns and making things stand out, it just makes it easier to look at too. Hey, professor, did you um, change yes. the color of the font um, for the organization and the location? I didn't, I just did everything pretty much straight. Uh, because I'm so. online, like when I paste it, you know how like on the sub actual sh support one, um, yeah. it's white. So like it's invisible on, on, cause the background is yeah. white. That's, that's not good. <laughs> anyway, let's take the next step. Cause actually there is a table formatting that's in this one and hopefully that will make it, you know, be, okay. uh, you know, legible. So then it says adjust column width. Okay. And I think we're happy with that. Right. On this one, well, this one is still not fitting. Right. So adjust the column width. So everything else seems to be fitting. Then it says to format the data as a table. Okay. Remember a table one has the filter and sort arrows. So we want to, you know, take this data, highlight the whole thing, and you remember how to do that, Nathaniel? How do we format this as a table? Insert table. Okay, that'll do it for us. Insert table, and it, you know, tells you the range of the data. So from A1 to D8, makes sense. And then say OK, and there, that looks a lot better now, right? There's the white text looking good. And actually, the default here seems to be the one they want, orange table style medium nine. Okay, that makes it a lot more legible. The white text actually works fine now with the orange fill. And we have banded columns. Look how much easier this is to read. And imagine if it was, you know, going across the screen and down with, you know, loads of data. So this, this definitely makes it easier to kind of scan. And we can also do things like sort and filter it. If we wanted to see just, you know, uh, one location or something like that, we can do that. So it's a great way to kind of, you know, manage the data. Good. Everybody happy? Only one more. And it's to protect the worksheet, right? So Jing wants to protect the contents of the worksheet from being moved around, protect the workbook structure without using a password. Okay. So remember to do that, we're going to go to review and protect the workbook, so not just the sheet, we wanna protect the entire book. So protect the book here, we're not using a password, make sure protect structure. So in this way, you know, no one can uh, move, delete, uh, rename the structure. So say okay. So now that it's protected, let's just try. I'll try to move this, nope, won't let me do it, see? Let me kind of move things around. I can select that, but I can't like, you know, take prospects and move it to the first sheet. I can't even add a new sheet. Look, if I click on the new sheet tab here, it won't let me add a new sheet because it's locked. Good. Okay. Any comments or questions? I know there was a little, you know, glitches here and there, but uh, they're minor. And I think that if you guys uh, spend a little time, you know, just trying it, um, as I said, you know, kind of massaging it a little bit, you should be fine. I wanted to show you one other thing um, that I think can be very useful. Um, and I think, you know, this relates to uh, something that someone put on the, you know, wish list. So uh, I'm gonna go to a web page here. Um, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, ELS.gov and uh, backslash computer. Actually, this is in the training, okay? So when you go to the Bureau of Labor, this, like, you know, you could spend weeks on this site because it's got so much data and uh, there's even like, you know, a classroom, you could um, take little courses and things like that, but um, just down and dirty, let me show you how to get, you know, some data from here. So I'm gonna go to data tools, and, uh, you know, again, you've got all kinds of stuff here. There's some restricted access databases that uh, you would have to have a password to, but um, there are free ones too. So let's go to data finder. 
and um, I don't know, I'll try to pick something that is somewhat pertinent to your uh, career choices. I'm going to say something like uh, advertising salary. Okay, let's see what happens there. Let's search that. So here's a nice one. Um, we won't uh, distinguish it uh, under gender. We'll just go to this one here. So employed full-time wage and salary workers, advertising and promotion managers. Let's try it. Okay, so you get this data and you can see that it's labeled uh, from 2018 to 2020. And um, you can see that there was a, you know, kind of a spike to 2019, and then it leveled off a little bit. Um, and then there are files that can be downloaded. Obviously, you can just do this again, because we're on a live web page. So you guys you know that you can do that in Excel, just copy it and bring it in. Or you can download it as an Excel file or as a CSV file. Okay, so this is a file that is uh, basically a text file that the data is delimited. Let's download it and see what it looks like. And I'm going to open it, see what happens here. Well, it opens up in numbers, which is, uh, you know, on my Mac. And it looks pretty nice in numbers. But let's actually open it up, if we can, in Word, so you can see it actually as a text file. Yeah, I think that's the file right there, right? So I'm going to say, I'm right-clicking, I'm going to say Open With. And that'll let me open it up with whatever you know software that I want to. At least I can open it. So let's try Word. Okay, so you can see here it's a Mac document here. At least I want to open it up as a Mac document. And this is what the data looks like on the the Word file. You can see that instead of it being in like a, a spreadsheet, it's delimited by column, not com columns, commas. So where it was columns in Excel, it just is commas now. Okay, so, okay, let's open it. Sounds good. Let's see what it looks like. There it is. Okay, so you can see it only has the commas there. Uh, and now let's save this file. So I'll do a save as, and um, I'll call it add salary. Uh, and I want to save it obviously as a Word file. So, not plain text, let's just save it as a standard Word file. I guess the standard one would be that, that makes sense, right? Okay, so save it. Okay, so now let's go back to Excel and let's see, let's bring that data into Excel. I'll just make a new sheet so we can see it nice and clean here. So now I'm going to go to the data tab and go to get external data and it's a text file, right? It should be a text file. So let's see if this works. Actually, it didn't work. I should have saved it as a text file, I guess, but it is here. Okay. And um, let's see if this works. It should work the same way. Okay. So it says that it's a delimited file with characters such as commas, tabs, it's a Macintosh file. So let's go to next. And then you can see, is it delimited by tabs? It still doesn't look right, right? Semicolons? No. But watch what happens when I click on commas. See, that makes it, it knows that there are commas there. So when I click on the comma one, it makes more sense what the data looks like. And then I can say next. And again, you can put some formatting here, or change the date formatting or whatever, but we'll live with this. Just say finish. And now it's going to say where it's going to actually paste the data. You can go to properties here and just make sure everything else looks right. A lot of this might be somewhat confusing, but it looks pretty standard. Then there's the data. Okay, it wasn't that much data. If you want, you can also do things like this. Like, okay, so let's, let's see, you know, the history from 2010. That might be a little bit more kind of extensive now. Okay, so we're going to refresh it, update it, and you'll see, whoa, very different, right? In a way, I feel sorry for you guys. 
because look how um, much better things were back in 2010. Things got a lot more, you know, obviously, uh, not only COVID, you can see like, you know, salaries went down in general here. Um, the, the market got more saturated, right? Let's go back even more, see what happens. Wow. So here you can see, you know, an uptrend and then a downtrend. So this is a great way to kind of look at this data. And again, you can download um, either the Excel file or the, the text file. Let's try the text file one more time here. See if I can make it work properly this time. So I'm going to open it up in Word. And this time I'll be nice and save it as a text file. So let's open the latest file here, which is this guy. Okay, you can see it looks kind of messy, right? We'll open it in Word. And now we'll save it. You can see it's comma delimited. So it could be tab delimited or space delimited, all different ways of kind of separating the data. I like commas, it makes sense, okay? Let's just call it comma, so I know the total difference between the other files. And this time I'll keep it as a plain text file. See if Excel likes that better. Okay, back to Excel. New document. All right, so let's see that salary data now um, being imported. I'm gonna go to data. And I'm going to the top data. I can go here, right? Import text file. Or I can go to here and go to text. Okay, so still didn't work exactly right. I don't know. It doesn't, doesn't seem to like that. Sorry about that. I don't know why it didn't work, actually. I may not be saving it correctly. Something is going on. Anyway, even if it doesn't work that way, you know, you can get the data just by doing this. Right, highlight the data, copy it, and bring it into Excel with the paste technique. Oh, that's the one line thing, right? That you guys were seeing. It does everything in one one line like that. So you want to make sure that you can paste with the delimited. So this time I went to paste special. Let's see if it likes this better. Yeah, that like definitely likes that better. See that? So paste special text worked better for me. In any event, it's a good idea to understand how to uh, consult the database. Um, certainly, if you have uh, the credentials to log on to a database for your core corporation. Um, you can, you know, mine data that uh, could be useful for forecasting, right? We looked at all kinds of interesting things that you can, you know, plot a trend or something like that, or um, just do research. And, uh, you know, this site is actually great because they give you all kinds of options where you can, uh, you know, download it directly as an Excel file or as a CSV file which will allow you to, uh, CSV is a comma separated values file. Uh, so everything is separated by values, uh, I mean by commas, and then you can uh, bring it into Excel like that.